time for the big three. Three stocks, three charts, three trades. Then Lichtenstein will take us through the charts. Here to take us through the trades, Don Kaufman, co-founder of Theo Trade. Thank you both for being here. Happy New Year. Good to see you both. Um, Don, you know, we start off the new year with lots of red arrows. Uh, what say you? Yeah, look, uh, you know, uh, December, really uh, from late October into late December, it was a huge bid, a uh, huge bid into the marketplace, looking for alpha anywhere that uh, investors and or portfolio managers can effectively find it. And uh, right now, I think we're actually seeing some of the unwinding uh, of, uh, of just that. All right. So that being said, I know you have a bearish thought on uh, Goldman Sachs today. Tell us about that. So Goldman Sachs actually fits perfectly into what I was just mentioning, you know, bidding up anything that had not had a bid the entire last year. And Goldman Sachs right now, I think, is fairly pivotal for some sell side activity. You know, predominantly, if you look at most of the financials, which are about to pass through earnings here in the next two weeks, you know, they had a wild move higher, obviously, late in uh, 2023, predicated basically on what? And when I ask that question, I'm not trying to be facetious, what were they bid up on? The fact that interest rates were substantially lower, there is nothing to sustain the bid in the financials. As such, I'm looking at a bearish position here, and I'm gonna give myself some time for this effectively to play out. So in Goldman Sachs, I'm gonna go all the way out to the March 15th expiration. I'm gonna be buying the 375 puts, selling the 365 puts. So it's a full-blown $10 wide spread. It's done for about a $2.90 debit. You know, as I was pricing this this morning, I was thinking, oh no, what happens if uh, Goldman Sachs starts to sell off uh, a bit today? And it is, it's down. Um, so again, the market right now is agreeing with some of the sentiments on this particular front. It's very difficult right now to discern why financials really rallied in the midst of lower rates into late last year. And meantime, Barclays yesterday maintained the overweight on Goldman Sachs and actually has the price target at 493. Completely different um, than what we're talking about here right now. Ben, your thoughts on the chart? Well, Nicole, the selling we've seen to begin the year, definitely what Don has warned us about uh, for a while now. It'll be interesting to see if it continues. And the chart behind me is a pretty good reflection of what we saw as far as the broader market, some of the recent weakness, and the continuation of that selling today. But this is a one-minute candle chart, so I don't want to get too married to that more granular time frame, but I do think it's important to be time frame specific when we're talking about trend because here in this instance, you can see it's been a very well-defined downtrend. We're talking from 389 down to 376. This is just to begin the year, some of the selling we've seen. But as you take a step back, I want to show you how it has us in a very key area, an area where the bulls, which have been rewarded handsomely, uh, we're going all the way back to beginning of November here, uh, end of October when stock was trading below 300, all the way up to those recent highs we just pointed to at 389. And as you take a look here, the selling that we just identified, a small blip on this longer term trend of the upside, and actually it has us right into a key area where those that are looking to participate with the trend are kind of what Don was talking about, sort of licking his chops earlier this morning, really getting uh, you know very focused on price activity. They're dialed in here, heightened awareness because we're testing the lower extreme of this range. But that's, again, if you're looking to participate in that bullish type pattern that's been playing out. And the reason I'm supportive of that bullish narrative here right now and kind of pushing back on what Don's talking about is because of this longer term trend as well, which is pretty well defined to the upside here also. We're going back to uh, the spring of 2020. Now, the one thing I can say is that we're very much in a range here. You can see that since we topped out back in the summer of 2021, it looks like up around 420, 430. We've been uh, relatively range bound. We've basically been consolidating around this 350 level. Not a lot of conviction as long as we hold below those highs. Just mentioned the recent lows here. We'll go back to May, June of 2022 or even last year back in October. Hold above those and we're very random and there could be some opportunity within this range here, Nicole. But the longer term trend is still to the upside. Right. OK. Uh, it's a little bit different. Are you expecting just um, some volatility too, Don? Yeah, you know, throughout the course of 2024, I think we're actually going to have a return to a degree of normalcy in the overall marketplace. And by that, I simply mean, you know, do you remember back in the day when, you know, bad economic data came out and it actually meant the market would sell off, not necessarily rally? The market right now is in a period of like this pivot where we're actually looking and saying like, hey, wait a second. 
there's there's bad data coming out. You know, we haven't actually seen any rate cuts, but if they are going to cut rates, that may actually uh, imply some uh, some ugly moves in the marketplace. So again, a period and a pivot, if you will, to some normalization inside of the broader marketplace, I think is actually in play. I think we're seeing that right now. Right, understood. Okay, next up, silver. Now in this one, you have a, a bullish call spread. Tell us about that. All right, so uh, bullish in the metals. Metals overall, I'm rather bullish in, but silver specifically has not had that big umph to the upside. So today, specifically, some of the metals really getting beaten up. I mean, specifically, silver is getting beaten up today. And I think it's actually a great opportunity for that long position. Again, I am always a contrarian at heart. So silver, I'm going out to the March 15th expiration. Now, first of all, why a bullish position in silver? Because even if we get a bit of a rally inside of dollar, look, we're looking right now at some degree of economic turmoil. We're not exactly sure. Are we going to get three rate cuts, six rate cuts? Are we even going to get a rate hike at this point? All of that is on the table. The political structure over the next couple of weeks, okay, it's a complete and utter toss up in this marketplace, which again is one of the primary reasons that I'm bullish on some of the metals even with the dollar rallying. So here, again, the March 15th expiration, I'm buying a 21 call, selling a 25 call. So just a $4 wide spread done for a $1 debit. Again, giving myself plenty of time for this to effectively play out to the upside. All right, um, so he has the time to do it. Your thoughts, Ben, when you look at this silver chart? Well, a couple things that stand out after listening to Don there. For one, I love the fact that he reminds everybody that rate hikes are still on the table, right? Nobody's ruled that out uh, on the Fed side of right. things. Uh, I market. think the market's getting a little bit ahead of the Fed here. But uh, uh, I also like the mention of the U.S. dollar, and we have seen some weakness in SLV's uh, reflection thereof, some of that strength in the dollar back above 102. Let's take a look, dive into the chart with me. Another good example of a short-term trend to the downside, but a bullish, a uh, uptrend in that longer-term um, uh, chart. And I'm going to also talk about how we're in a very random phase here, so not a lot of conviction. I'm going to have to default to Don on this one. Uh, in terms of the uh, potential to make some money here. But taking a look, first and foremost, you can see a very similar uh, pattern as far as what we just looked at a minute ago. But this one, in this case, has been and continues to be to the downside. So again, we're talking about from 22 down to just below 21. Just uh, taking a look here at a one minute candle chart, but some of the selling we've seen and just the recent uh, uh, weakness here to begin the year. Now let's step back here. As you see, we've been very much range bound. This goes all the way back to the beginning of October. We bottomed out around 19, rallied up to 24, we'll call it 23.50. And look, since we've been kind of just chopping around 21 and a quarter, 21.50, just below 22, uh, above this 21, 20 level, not a lot of conviction, simply put, right? So uh, that's why I say I'm gonna kind of default to Don on this one, but here you can see a longer term trend to the upside, a bullish pattern where we broke out after testing lows after the pandemic we got below 11 briefly all the way up to 28 sideways since for the most part currently balancing again as I mentioned around this 2150 level so I see this as kind of pivotal but I think it could go both ways as long as we're within this range uh, not a lot of conviction here and opportunity for both sides in many ways until we break out take out that upper or that lower extreme right okay look he's deferring to you on this one I don't get used to it Don <laughs> No, definitely not. You know, <laughs> on, on the silver trade, I'm far less technical and much more right now into the idea of like just some economic turmoil. Look, again, the, the Fed, it's a toss up. The political situation, geopolitical situation, it's going to be a toss up. And that's something we're going to have to deal with in all of 2024. And that's why I think uh, metals at this point look like a pretty good deal. Okay. And next up, what about Meta here? You have the bullish... Uh bearish i'm sorry the the bearish trade oh yeah i am uh steving on uh, on meta over here after a uh -huh. about 180 percent return last year so if you look at the magnificent seven overall and obviously what we term the january effect a little sell side activity yesterday degree of sell side activity but the day is is young right now but if the magnificent seven is going to come off i think it's actually meta that's going to take one of the larger hits and that's exactly why i'm looking at this particular trade and it is a bearish trade so is is it about technicals? 
Absolutely not. And although Ben is going to look at the chart in a moment, this is much more about mega market capitalization. And if that's going to start to come in, meaning that trade is going to start to see a degree of sell side activity, I really think they're going to come from Meta. The, uh, the business overall has degrees of weakness in it that other aspects in the other businesses don't look for instance like google or apple which have revenue streams from multiple sources meta it's just all advertising at this point with that i'm out to again the march 15th expiration all three trades today i'm actually using a longer duration just to kind of feel out what's actually going on this year so the march 15th expiration i am buying the 325 puts I am selling the 315 put. So once again, I go back to a put spread. It's a $10 wide put spread, which actually kind of protects me from degrees of volatility. It's done for a $2.95 debit. Again, big time bearish trade inside of Meta here, right in the beginning of the year, going to carry us right through earnings as well. All right, um, you know, this one, he, he really is excited when he's talking about this one, this bearish trade, Ben, your thoughts? Well, I can understand that, Nicole. We have seen some weakness here. The short term is not necessarily a situation that the bulls were looking for to begin the year. Let's begin much like we did with Goldman and uh, 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 Silver and take a look just first and foremost with the more granular uh, five minute time frame I started with here, but I wanted to see a similar pattern, right? We've traded from 361, we'll call it 362, all the way down to this 340 level and no rejection as of yet. You can see areas of consolidation that formed at lower and lower levels along the way. But I wanted to show you why I've really got my eye on the recent selling because here, take a look. It took out a key area, a couple key areas that were established on the way up. These are hourly candles I have here. So 60 minute candles. And let me show you what happened here as we were forming areas of value at higher and higher levels into the end of the year. We traded up to 362, but while we were balancing around 360, we were referencing 349 because the bulls are expecting that to continue trend continuation uh, and follow through. Uh, is normally what you're looking for if you're participating with it. But look what happened. Instead, we invalidated that trend with this break below that 350, 349 level. So not what the bulls were looking for on the five minute or on the hourly candle. It looks like we're starting to roll over. But when you take a step back and look at the longer term daily candle chart, you're going to see, look at this. We're going all the way back to, we're talking the fall of 2022 when we bottomed out around 88. And it's been nothing but value forming at higher and higher levels since. Now, this is a situation that's playing out here looks like a bit of a well potentially a v top right those are very rare unusual occurrences but they do happen if so then well this idea that we could be bouncing around 352 is uh, not necessarily going to play out right we would come back off 340 would then be a key area to watch in that instance we're still kind of looking at 300 so again there's some room to the downside here but this is a long-term trend to the upside more weakness here apparent on that more granular intraday time frame rather than what you're seeing here on this longer term chart here. But I've got this bullish narrative still thinking we could balance around 352 here potentially. That long chart is pretty unbelievable when you look at that. Don, final thoughts. Yeah, I'll take the other side of that one. <laughs> and that's exactly what I am doing. I, uh, I I enjoy taking the other side, especially of some of uh, Ben's calls. But you know what? Eventually here, uh, as I say, I like to get you know, ahead of the crowd a little bit. I like to be the first one through the wall. And on uh, Meta specifically, if we are gonna see a little bit of uh, Magnificent Seven diminish in terms of uh, market cap, Meta is actually going uh, first and foremost. And uh, that is actually why I'm in tune with this particular bearish trade. I say, all right. I mean, the group is pretty mixed for today. Yesterday, a lot of down arrows for the Magnificent Seven. Great to see you both on the big three today. Really appreciate it. Don Kaufman. And Ben Lichtenstein, thank you both for being here.